Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all doing safe. So this is the Xiaomi 14T Pro. Now this is not a full review because I've only been using the phone for about four days. So not long enough for me to call it a review, but enough that I have a lot of uh, strong impressions on the phone. So first things first, I actually know the price of this phone this time. Usually I don't, but this phone in Europe, it's gonna start selling for 799 euro. Now in Asia, it's gonna be a little bit lower than that, like cause your prices are always a little bit higher. So I'm assuming in Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, you can probably find it for maybe like the 700 US dollars, 650 US dollars range. And for that, you're getting a 6.8 inch OLED display, 144 hertz refresh rate. It's a completely flat panel, which a lot of you guys like. And the overall design has that kind of boxy design that I guess a lot of us associate with iPhones and Google Pixel also kind of followed. So it's a flat aluminum alloy frame and it feels very sturdy in the hand. In fact, with this new Titan gray color on the back, this is a glass panel on the back, but it's painted to look like metal. So when I first got this phone, I thought it was a one piece unibody aluminum phone, just like the phones we used to get in 2015. But no, this is glass back, so it supports wireless charging, but the in-hand feel feels very premium. It feels like an all metal phone. It's like a throwback to devices that we used to use back in 2014, 2015. Powering the phone, it's a MediaTek Dimensity 9300 plus. So it's a little bit older chip. The new one is coming just around the corner, but this is still a flagship performer. On top of that, you get full access to Google's suite of AI features. So this includes generative AI photo editing, circle to search. So that feature that was previously exclusive to Samsung is now here. And also you have Gemini Live. On the camera front, you have a 50 megapixel main camera using the Light Fusion 900 sensor that's used in the non-ultra Xiaomi 14 series. So the Xiaomi 14 Pro, exact same camera here. And if you remember reviews of that phone, you would know that that camera is very good. F1.6 aperture, so very fast. The image sensor is one over 1.3 inch, which is not the largest, but the Xiaomi T series had never gone one inch. So it's not like this is a step back in any way. The telephoto zoom lens appears to be the exact same lens used in last year's 13T Pro, which is not bad news because that lens was really good and probably my favorite lens of that phone. So it's a 50 megapixel lens, about 2.6x optical zoom, which is about 60 millimeter, and it doubles as a telemacro lens. So you can bring it very up close to the subject and still get focus with natural bokeh too. Then you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide f2.2 aperture. This 12 megapixel ultra wide is fine. It definitely falls short of the best ultra wide cameras out there, but it's, you know, it's not bad, it's not great. But the, the two main lens, the main lens and the telephoto, they're absolutely flagship territory and can keep up with almost any other phone out on the market. The only phones it will probably lose to is probably like the Vivo X100 Ultra and the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Around the front, you have a 32 megapixel selfie camera with much improved algorithm this year because I previously, I thought Xiaomi selfie cameras were a little bit below par, but it's much better this time around and you can record 4K front facing videos. Speaking of better algorithm, the Xiaomi portrait mode is also much better because if you, again, if you watch my videos on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, 13 Ultra, 13 Pro, I said the portrait system of those Xiaomi phones were pretty weak. Like I actually didn't want to use it. I wanted to shoot with just normal mode but the portraits here are much improved. Edge detection is much better. Part of the reason is because this phone has Xiaomi's latest ISP, which Xiaomi calls AISP, because it's an image signal processor that can run large language AI models, including one language model specifically for portraits, another model specifically for tone. And the results are really good looking portraits, as you can see here. I think right now of all the phone brands, Xiaomi and Vivo are doing the best damn job in terms of portrait photography. They can be a lot more realistic than the overly digital portraits captured by the Google Pixel, for example. There's also a lot of fun film simulation that you can play with that simulates the effects of black and white photography or a retro film camera. It's very fun to play with. It's just a more interesting and diverse portrait system than what Google or Samsung is giving us these days. In fact, I think the iPhone's new photographic styles that allows you to change the tone of shots, apply different like color signs to it. I really think Apple was kind of inspired by what Chinese brands like Xiaomi and Vivo were doing. And this is not a complete random guess on my end because I've been to Apple headquarters. I've been in Apple image briefings. I know for a fact that they are aware of Chinese phones. Like, trust me, they know. It's, 
Inside Apple headquarters, they're not just comparing against Samsung and Google. This new ISP also has a much faster shutter. Xiaomi says it's 1.6 times faster than last year's 13T Pro phones. So as you can see here, I'm taking a picture of a moving train and every shot is clean and crisp. Video performance, as you can see, is also really good. Stabilization's on par. Are you watching the camera footage right now? Kelly lens. Not bad, man, not bad, not bad. Ultra wide. Yeah, the ultra wide is very soft. I think the camera looks good. Zoom lens. There's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in here that can be charged at 120 watt speed with the included charger. And it supports wireless charging for the first time in a T-series phone, 50 watt wireless charging. Um, this is not a full review, so I can't give you full gauge of battery life because I have been using this phone alongside a couple of other phones. I haven't fully, just heavily used this phone all day outside yet. So I cannot say whether the battery life is excellent or below par, but I think 5,000 millimeter cell using Xiaomi's typical Hyper OS software, I think it's gonna be pretty solid battery life, but I'll come back around to that later. This is not a full review. As for performance, like I said, even though this chip is one year old and it's on four nanometer architecture, it's still every bit as powerful as most phone chips out on the market. The thermals have also been quite improved because I ran a 20 minute wildlife extreme stress test and this phone passed with pretty respectable stability and not all Xiaomi phones can pass the test. For example, the Xiaomi Mix Flip which I also reviewed, failed that test. There's also IP68 for water and dust resistance here. So overall, my early impressions of the 14T Pro is very positive. I love this construction and hardware. This phone looks and feels very premium. It looks like an all metal unibody phone. I also like this power button with um, extra texture on the outside so you can differentiate between the button and the volume rockers, something that maybe Google should take note. And also the button's very clicky and a little bit more tactile than many other phones that I've used. The hardware is pretty much impeccable, especially considering that this phone starts at 800 euro in Europe and probably a little bit less than that in Asia. So this is the Xiaomi 14T Pro. I will be back with a longer review, maybe some camera comparisons against other phones. I have a lot more coming this month. It's, it's very busy, man. So please stay tuned. Thanks for watching.